Hey guys, how's it going? Well, let me set this down over here on the old dashboard. See if it'll stay up there. Uh, well, this is kind of a little bit of a minor flap of video. I got this car for sale over here, this Focus on Craigslist. And that's the one I fixed up and did the interior on and stuff like that. You've seen it several times. You know what I'm talking about. If not, check back in my videos and you can check out some videos of that car. Well, I've entered into that dimension of time and space that these days I just can't stand going into anymore and that's what I call the Craigslist zone. I used to enjoy the Craigslist zone and I still enjoy going there if I'm a purchaser but as far as selling stuff man I detest it. I can't stand it anymore. I have had this car for sale for a couple three days and it never fails when you sell a car on Craigslist that you have to go through these different categories of people that you interact with and you know especially when it's a cheap car like that when I think I've got the car listed for $2,400 OBO which is it's pretty competitive I've, I've checked the competition locally on cars and especially in the other Ford Focus cars and it's that's competitive for the miles it has and 97,000 miles and the condition it's in is nice and clean now so it's competitive but I always get, whenever I list a car like that for sale, uh, I always get these text messages from people. The first the first round comes of these people that send me text messages and they'll say, well, you take X amount of dollars today, you know. Or they'll say, well, you take X amount of dollars, you know, will you take that for it. And the first, the first of those, those people that say, well, you, well sometimes I get it. I got on this one, as a matter of fact, they'll say like, well, you take $1,500 today, you know, that's $900 under what I'm asking for it. It's way under what it's worth, you know, and so I get those, and I ignore those. I don't respond to those except one of them I laughed at him, and he got all smart with me, you know, well, I wouldn't buy that car. Well, hey, you know what? I don't want you to buy that car. If you're going to be stupid enough to send me a text message offering me that for it, it's not for sale to you anyway. You know, that's just a fish. That, all it is, that crap is a fishing expedition. And uh, it's just for people to see if they can get somebody desperate enough to sell their car for that. It ain't happening here. So I get those. And then I get the people that don't want to negotiate, evidently. They're aversion to the negotiation. And they always, well, will you take this for it? And so a couple times I've actually answered these people if they made me an offer that I was... You know, it was in line with what I expected to get for it. I'll say, okay. And then they do that, and then all of a sudden they start backing up. They start backtracking. They're like, oh, well, well you know, I, uh, they start asking all these questions. You know, they didn't ask any questions before. They didn't ask you any questions about that card. They just offered you a set price for it. Well, well, you know, I, uh, uh, has it been wrecked? Uh, you know, has it, uh, is it automatic? You know, they just start. They weren't expecting somebody to actually take them up on that, so now they're having to actually, you're cutting through the BS with them, and they're flakes. They're like the first group of those people I just told you about. They're flakes. They're not serious. And, uh, so you get through those groups, and you know, those people, those people are what I call fantasy car buyers. People that do that kind of stuff is, I say nine times out of ten, they don't have money. They don't have enough money to buy this car, or even or any car like that. They're just out for something to do, you know. They, they want to ask questions, and they want to talk, and they want to waste your time, and they want to do all this crap. But they don't have money to buy a car, you know. They want to do all this crap that leads up to the act of buying the car, yet they don't want to do the last two steps. The last two steps on buying a car are go to where the car is physically, and then if you like the car, give the owner give the seller money and you drive away with the car. See, they do everything but those last two steps, which are crucial. You don't buy a car without doing those last two steps. So, somebody explain to me what that's all about. Why would I, why would I drive, you know, why would I waste so much time doing that crap if I don't have the money? I, maybe I have too much sense. I don't know. 
So anyway, it's a frustrating experience. I have to filter through all this crap. I have to figure out who's not serious. Then I have the people, I always have the people that call you or they text message you and they get your address and they're coming and they're going to look at it and they're going to do this and they never show up. They never show up. They're, you know. Where do those people go? Do they start out from their house and get like five miles down the road and get in a panic all of a sudden say, oh my God, I, if I go to this person's house, I'm going to actually have to buy a car. What is that, is that what they do? Whoops, hit the wrong button. I mean, really? Am I sitting behind this GPS? I am, aren't I? Well, anyway, I'm sorry if you couldn't have to see half my face there, but. So, anyway, upshot of it is I am still, still, still don't like selling cars. I've had a couple people, out of all the people that get send me text messages and emails, and all that crap, I've had two people actually show up here and physically look at it, drive it, and the person that was just the first person, the age old thing, they said, well, we're going to look at another one, we'll call you back regardless. Did they call me back? Nah. Nah. And he, he said he was buying it for his mother-in-law or somebody like that, and that she was used to driving Lexus and, and some other kind of real nice car, and I thought to myself, I said, hey, shit. She ain't gonna buy no damn Ford Focus if she's been driving a Lexus. So I didn't expect that to ever happen. It didn't. And then the guy today he brought his little princess daughter along with her. She's buying her a car and they drove it. And she wasn't in love with it. She wasn't that in love with it. You know, and, and I'm not a parent, but I'm thinking this to myself, you know. If I'm the one buying the car, a little man or a little lady's going to drive what I buy, you know, for now. If that's their first car, he said, well, yeah, we, we just need a car that they won't beat up. And, and uh, if they back it into something or scrape something, you know, it won't be a big deal. And I'm thinking, okay, all right, there it is. You know, and he said, well, we're just, she's not in love. We're just going to look at a couple other, you know, we're looking... He, he said they were looking at a Honda, get this, a 98 Honda Civic, which is the age of this car, it's as old as this car now, a 98 Honda Civic with 170,000 plus miles on it, and, you know, I saw it on Craigslist, I went and scoped it out when he told me where it was and saw the ad for it, and it, it looks alright, it's got the wrong hubcaps, it's got tint on the two back windows and not on the front, so it's just the regular, your usual old sort of crappy used car and he says well, well look at this and he says but the guy won't answer his phone and, and this is the kind of crap I get from people that proves to me that people have no damn idea what they're doing when they're buying a car He's, he says well he says you know that's a he says that's 170,000 miles but he says but that's nothing for a Honda you know that and I'm thinking to myself yeah I've had a lot of Hondas that are that age and that that uh, mileage. And number one, you don't buy an automatic Honda that's that mileage. Number two, you don't buy a Honda, a cheap Honda, without knowing if the tone belt's been done, which you didn't. And yada, yada, yada. You know, they ain't that great of a car when they get older. They're just, they're just not. So, this is the kind of thing I get into it's, uh, that people say to me. It's like, well, you know, she's not in love with your car, even though your car's got 80,000 less miles on it. It's in excellent condition now new tires on it she's not in love with it so we're going to keep looking for a another two thousand dollar car that's that's stupid that is stupid you know you can buy the car if she's just never does warm up to it and she does proves that she's not going to wreck the thing or damage it then down the road a few months later a year later from now you can buy her another car buy her a better car but really and, you know, if I was the one selling that 98 Honda, and I know I'm going on and on about this, but I'm just going to talk about it. If I was the one selling that 98 Honda, then the first thing I would hear is, well, there's somebody has got a 2000 Focus, and it's got 97,000 miles on it, so we're going to go look at it, and they would go buy it instead of that car. Why does that always happen to me, you know? I don't know, but... Uh, 
So whatever. I'm just gonna let it sit until it sells. You know, somebody will buy it. You know, there's just you always. It's just an ordeal. Something I hate going through. That's why. I've, that's why I'm, you know I'm getting out of the buying and selling cars because I just it sucks, man. I had a guy over the weekend. He starts calling me about that Focus, and he's, you know, and he said, "Yeah, I'm." I'm he says, uh, "He says I'm interested in it." He says, "I live in Tuscaloosa, but I got a friend or two that they'll, they'll just come by and look at it for me up there, and if it's what you say it is, that's what, you know, a two thousand dollar car, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, if it's what you say it is, if it's not." You know, if it's if it turns out not to be a certified used car, then we're going to pass on it. <laughs> but anyway, he says if it's what you say it is, it says I'll just have him pay the money and I'll come pick it up later. Well, first thing happens, the first BS thing happens. He calls and says, "Well, I can't get anybody to come look at it." I'm thinking, yeah, that, that's no surprise there. And uh, he says, "So I'm I, what I'll do is if you still got it, which I hear that one all the time. If you still got it, if you still got it, if you still got it by such by the weekend, Saturday morning, which was yesterday." He says, "I'll take a ride up there, and I'll just, you know, bring somebody with me, and we'll, if it's if it's okay, we'll pick it up." So I said, "Okay." So he calls me. Uh, he sends. He calls me yesterday. I don't know if he called me or sent me a text message. I don't know. But either way, he contacted me yesterday morning, Saturday morning. He says, should be there by 1 p.m. Well, I had somebody else come way wanting to look at it before 1 p.m. And uh, I said, well, that's fine. You can come look at it. I said, but I got a guy supposedly, and I always say it that way now, supposedly coming to look at it. Because clues I can't sell it out from under him. So I said, okay, we'd just like to go ahead and check it out. We're making a the rounds and looking at cars and stuff and I said fine and, you know come on over so I, I called this guy back the guy that called me from Tuscaloosa he was on his way he said sure enough sure enough the next layer of bullshit exposed itself he says well I yeah I, I she's gonna I don't know who she was I never heard any she mentioned but she was gonna have to pay with a check she works for the sheriff's department at such and such it's a good check you know don't know if you do that and I was like no 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 I said that you didn't tell me anything about that so he says well okay well, well I can't I can't get money out of the bank and I can't you know it's just we just couldn't get it and and I'm thinking to myself, why was this not mentioned already? You know, really. I want to explain to people that buy things off Craigslist or anywhere else, especially, and in particular, cars and trucks. There's a few guidelines that you have to understand about buying cars and trucks for it to occur. And maybe that, maybe this is facts that people just never realized so far. But here's the one thing it takes. Like I said, you have to be prepared to actually go look at the car. You cannot look at a car via a cell phone or a text message or teleportation or ESP or anything else. You have to actually get in whatever form of transportation you have and go look at their car. You know, that, it, it's a fact. It's a fact of life, folks. You have to do that. There's no way around that one. Number two, you have to have money because generally the way people sell cars and trucks is they sell them for money, in particular cash. There's not many people that want to take a second party out of state check uh, written on somebody else. You know, are you freaking serious? Nobody's gonna do that that has any sense. So don't do that. Don't, don't expect anybody to take a check for a car ever. If they do, they're as shady as you are. But so anyway, you it takes cash. You have to have cash. You know, people we, we've moved on from trading horses or crops or cotton or working in the kitchen to pay things off. You can't do that to buy a car anymore. So if you don't have money, if you don't have the amount that the seller wants, has agreed to, you're not getting the car. Now is that a bombshell? You're not getting the car. You don't get it. How about that? Isn't that amazing? So if you don't have money, 
you don't get the car. Let me say it again. You don't have money, you don't get the car. You don't get it. So, uh, so I would suggest if you don't want to be have emotional stress to yourself, don't waste your time and the seller's time talking about a car sale, talking about a car when you don't have any money, because you're not going to get it. You know, it devolves into these people that don't have much money, and I'm I don't have much money. But this is the thing people that don't have much money do. They say, well, they break this buying anything down to not whether it's a good deal or a bad deal, but I can either get it or I can't get it. I either have enough money to get it or I can't get it. So, Uncle Phil, bless his heart, he's the same way. He's as bad as anybody about that. He says, well, I want it real bad. I want it real bad. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll come buy it. I'll come do this. I'll come do that. He's not prepared to do that. I say, you know what I say, guys? I say that 85% of the people that shop for cars or look at cars on Craigslist either have no intention of buying a car or they are nowhere near financially prepared or capable for buying a car. So that's my speech on Craigslist. And for all the people that go around and do the stuff I've described in this video, get a life, okay? If you don't have any money, you don't need to be me looking on Craigslist. Well, you can look. I mean, I don't mind telling you what they can do, but if you're going to look on Craigslist, you know, this is not X-rated video channels. It's not a fantasy you're in, you know. If if you don't have the money or the wherewithal to go buy this thing, then quit jerking the owner around on it and acting like you're interested and acting like you're going to do something because you're not. You're a fake. You're a, you're a fake. It all comes down to it. So anyway, I'm going to take you guys and let's do something fun for a change after this big speech. So, uh, thanks for listening. I always enjoy hearing your uh, comments, and they're mostly welcome. Have a good guys. Bye.